Hello, my name is Jeff Ruddle, one of the VAT managers here at James Cooper Creston. This is one of a series of tax intense webinars we are running where we will be looking at the various aspects of VAT. Now, no doubt you're aware it's often referred to as a simple tax. However, we all know that is far from the real position. And with this series of webinars, we hope to clarify a range of VAT issues. In this particular webinar, we will we'll be reviewing the VAT treatment of the conversion of a property from commercial use to residential use and the applicable VAT rates. Uh, next slide, please. In recent years, there has been a large increase in conversions of commercial property to residential, prompted by reduced planning rules and the general need for more housing. The impact of COVID on the commercial rental sector is also likely to lead to more such conversions, as in the short to medium term, there may be a reduced demand for commercial rental property. And I think we're seeing that in the high street as it is. In this webinar, I will explain the VAT rules for the builder when providing construction services and the VAT treatment for the use or disposal of the residential property after conversion. Next slide. Let us look at the VAT rate on construction services of a conversion. At the moment, there is a reduced VAT rate applicable to construction services provided in the conversion work from commercial to residential use. This is currently 5%, a significant reduction to the standard 20%, and despite all the tax changes elsewhere, there does not appear to be any pressure to change this. So firstly, what do we regard it as a commercial building? Now in the VAT world, a commercial building can simply be described as any building or part of a building that is non-residential, and that would include offices, pubs, barns, retail outlets, and similar. Now be aware, some of these may already have the self-contained accommodation as part of their structure, and a conversion of this may be charged at the full rate of 20%, so do seek guidance at the time. Now, residential property, which is temporarily used for other purposes, such as storage in a flat above a shop, is still considered a residential building and so does not qualify. So if we move on to the next slide, what we want to look at is what type of residential building are we expecting to see after the conversion work, really? Now, in essence, the 5% rate applies to the conversion of non-residential into residential buildings. We can And we can summarise these as a single household dwelling, which is like is similar to the conversion of a barn to a single dwelling, a change in the number of a single household dwellings within a building, such as flats or apartments, if there's a change in the number of flats, uh, a conversion of commercial offices to dwellings, which is quite common at the minute, or, a or the development of a re relevant residential purpose building known as an RRP, where su such buildings are like student accommodation, hospice, care homes and children's homes, etc. So in slide, next slide, we look at what services can the builder reduce the VAT rate on. So the question we all want to know is to what extent can the reduced rate be applied by the builder? Now a common scenario is a commercial property which has been empty for some time and the owner intends to convert to residential use. With such conversion work, the VAT liability of 5% only applies to the services of the builder and the materials he supplies as part of that work. Now you need to be aware that if the premises had a residential use in the last 10 years, the 20% rate may need to be applied. The reduced rate can include works of repair, maintenance or improvement, including drainage, water and waste disposal. And this will also include construction services involving the installation of goods such as kitchen units and sanitary work. But bear in mind that if the work needs statutory planning permission or building control, you must obtain approval for this. Now, the reduced rate of 5% applies to services all down the supply chain, in effect, to subcontractors as well as the main contractor. However, you need to look out for the new reverse charge construction rules which may apply in such a development. Now, the 5% rule will also apply to garages, but only where the conversion of an outbuilding or construction of the garage can, occurs at the same time and it is to be used by the new occupants of the residential property that is under development. So what we also need to look at on the next slide is what services cannot, uh, cannot be reduced where the VAT still remains at 20%. It, it should be noted that the 5% rate does not apply to everything. So it only applies to the construction services as we've mentioned made at the time. However, if you buy materials separately from a builder's merchant, you will still be charged 20% on the building materials. And the provision of professional services such as those provided by architects or surveyors will also remain at 20% assuming they're VAT registered. The standard rate of 20% will also apply 
to service, services involving the installation of non-building materials. And this will include items such as carpets, white goods, loose furniture, etc. It's also worth noting that the hire of scaffolding or, or goods such as generators, the hire of goods for the building work may also be flatted at 20%. And in general, the refurbishment of dwellings rather than conversions is also still at 20%. So on the next slide, slide, we want to highlight how important it is that a builder applies the correct rate, 5% for these conversion services or 20% for the exceptions. Evidentially, you, the developer, do not have to actually issue a certificate to the builder. However, evidence does need to be retained to support the application of the use of the lower rate of 5%. So where the project involves the conversion of a property from a commercial to residential use, we would advise that you retain copies of the planning permission, building plans and associated materials. At some point, HMA, HMRC may wish to see those. And bear in mind that this may be a visit to the builder, not necessarily yourselves. In essence, there's no need for a certificate, but you do need proof that the project itself qualifies for the 5% rating that you've applied. You should also be aware of the potential for a single site with a single contract to be two different fat rates. For example, if you build a barn, if you have a barn conversion and at the same time we're building a new dwelling, the contractor would then need to portion their services between the two aspects of such a project. So this would be part reduced rate at 5% and part zero rate for any new domestic dwelling. So what do we do about after conversion, sale or lease on the, on the next slide? So what is the VAT rate on the sale or lease of the resultant developments? Now, the first outright sale of a newly converted property for domestic use is VAT zero rated. This is the same as a new development. The zero rate will only apply to the first sale. All sub subsequent sales will be VAT exempt, as long as it's for residential use. Now, whilst the sale is, is zero rated, this does enable full VAT recovery on the construction costs and any professional fees. So bear in mind that if the supply is actually to be a short term lease or you wish to let the buildings, then that supply will be VAT exempt. And this will mean there is either no recovery of VAT on the construction and professional cert fees, or at the very least, a significant restriction due, due to partial exemption issues. And this assumes that the developer does have some taxable supplies at play. So we definitely would advise you seek guidance if, you, if you're in such a scenario. But bear in mind that a developer or an individual who only makes exempt supplies will have, may have no entitlement to register at all. And in that case, you, if you can still get 5% on the construction, you are at least 50% from the VAT rate that could be applied. So in reality, the intention of the developer is a key issue. Do you have an intention to sell or to rent? And please make that decision as early as possible. So what we want to have, do now is just have a very quick look at other building services that have the VAT reduced rate applied and on the next slide. Now, as briefly mentioned earlier, as a conversion from commercial to residential, there are other scenarios where 5% rate can apply to construction services. This will include renovating dwellings that have been empty for at least two years immediately before the start of works, and you will need evidence to support that. The conversion of a property into a relevant residential building, RRP, as I mentioned before, um, or a change in the number of dwellings in a single residential property. And the example we would talk about there is where you have a single dwelling and you convert it into self-contained flats or two flats into a single dwelling or even two flats into three flats. What you must do is have a change in the number. If you don't change the number of dwellings, then VAT could still apply at 20% rather than the 5%. So what, in essence, on the final slide, all I want to do is say to you, thank you very much for watching and listening to this very brief webinar. I appreciate this is quite a lot of information to take in and data also may raise additional questions. I am aware that we haven't really touched on the impact of the VAT reverse charge for building and construction services, which may be applicable in certain circumstances. And we do hope to have a separate webinar on that in due course. Please do consider getting in touch if you have any questions on the matters raised or indeed on any VAT issues that we can assist you with. My contact details are on the screen now. Jeff Ruddle, jruddle at jamescooper.co.uk. And I would ask that you all look out for our other Tax and 10 series. And if you go to our website, these should be available. Thank you again and goodbye.